On September 1st, 2014, the infamous Sergei Bobrov discovered a joint vulnerability in both Google Analytics, the most widely used analytics engine on the planet, and Django, one of the most commonly used web frameworks on the internet. After a full two years of this vulnerability ravaging the internet, on September 26, 2016, the vulnerability was finally patched. Sergey was able to receive bug bounties from both Google and Django for his efforts. The vulnerability in question was serious. A sophisticated cross-site request forgery token bypass, making anyone on the internet, like you and me, susceptible to allowing attackers to use our own devices to leak our data, crack our accounts, steal our financial information, or even delete our accounts entirely. Cross-site request forgery is the lesser known of the big three web attacks, with the other two being SQL injection and cross-site scripting. In order to understand the mechanics behind CSRF, we need to understand cookies, which are an integral part of the web. A cookie is nothing more than a piece of data that is stored in your browser. They take the form of key value pairs, where the key is the name of the cookie and the value is the associated data. Cookies serve a vast and ever-expanding multitude of purposes, but let's go over just one of their use cases, authentication, as an example. When you log into a website, you need to go through an authentication process, which verifies that you are indeed who you say you are. Normally, the authentication process is quite a hassle, consisting of typing in long passwords and even waiting for 2FA codes to arrive on your phone. Once you successfully log into a website though, the web server generates a unique authentication code and places it in your browser. This is why you remain logged in as you navigate to different parts of the website. Cookies are automatically included in HTTP requests, so for each subsequent request you make, the web server looks at the authentication cookie, confirms it is the one that it previously generated for you, and then accepts the fact that you are indeed logged in. It's the same mechanism as showing your ID only once at a nightclub, and then getting a wristband as a certificate of successful admission, which represents the cookie. Now, only the wristband needs to be displayed for subsequent verification, rather than going through the entire ID process again. Now, if you were wondering, this means that you don't actually need to crack someone's credentials, or even 2FA codes, in order to gain access to their accounts. If you're able to somehow get a hold of the previously generated and still valid cookie, you can manually place this into your own browser's cookie jar, and boom, account hacked. This practice is called session hijacking, and definitely deserves its own video. The reason why this can't easily be pulled off is because these cookies are private, also known as being domain or origin specific. Websites can only read the cookies from within their own cookie jar, meaning running a malicious website to read cookies from a different website is not going to work. The browser won't let you. Also, when a browser makes a request to a certain domain, only that domain's cookies are sent with the request. Cross-site request forgery, though, is not about hacking into a user's account. CSRF is all about tricking the victim's browser into performing malicious activities itself. Think about this. Let's say you log into any old website. There's certainly going to be legitimate options available that you're not going to want to click, such as the option to delete your account or to change your password. If an attacker wanted to delete your account themselves, they would need to gain access to your account in the first place, which shouldn't be possible. The thing is though, an attacker could trick the victim into doing it themselves. That is what CSRF is all about. Under the hood of the delete button, there's going to be some endpoint, such as example.com slash account slash delete. When this link is clicked, the associated cookies from example.com will be sent in the HTTP request, which is how the server knows which account to delete. If you send the victim this exact link and they click it, their browser is going to send the request with their own cookies, causing their account to be deleted in the exact same way it would be as if they manually decided to click the button on their own. We can then disguise this link in many difficult to detect ways, such as putting it into a hyperlink, or even sending the request programmatically in the background. The web server has no way of knowing if the user actually intended on sending this request. So, why isn't the entire internet broken? CSRF is protected against nowadays with something called CSRF tokens. With every single form, API, or button that is served to a user, a CSFR token is generated and served alongside it. In order for the server to consider the request a valid request that it should process, the request needs to be sent back with the same token that it was handed out with originally. 
Imagine a professor has a physical box that their students need to hand their papers into before a specified due date. When each student hands in their paper, they need to get their ID checked, as to prevent against the case that a student writes somebody else's name on a paper. This represents authentication. Now, what would stop someone from sabotaging you by swapping out your essay with a fake essay while they're not looking, tricking you into handing it in yourself? This is how CSFR works. The CSFR token would be a unique sticker that is handed out with each essay to each student and must be turned back in with the exact same sticker. If an attacker gives a student a fake essay, they could write their name on it, but they won't have access to this unique sticker, meaning the fake would be detected. CSFR tokens are unique to specific users and should be cycled frequently, or even better yet, should be single use entirely, where the server generates a new one for every single form that it serves. Getting back to our example, on the real account page, the delete button will be served with the token, and the account will only be deleted if this request is sent back with the associated token. If an attacker tricks the user into clicking the link, it will not be sent with the token, meaning the server won't end up acting on it. This is how CSFR attacks are normally defended against. Something of interest to note is that CSRF tokens are not inherently cookies, although a lot of the time, they'll end up being stored as a cookie. Just the fact alone that you might have a valid CSFR cookie in your browser is not enough. The CSFR token needs to be included in the request body itself, as opposed to the header, which is where cookies are normally sent. More on this to come. This is where this specific CSRF token vulnerability comes into play. This specific vulnerability is present within the web framework known as Django, which is among the most widely used web frameworks on the internet today. Built into Django is the mechanism that handles CSRF tokens, and normally, it's pretty good at it. This vulnerability is a joint vulnerability between Django and Google Analytics. Google Analytics is the most widely used analytics engine in the world. On websites that use Google Analytics, attackers can actually bypass CSRF protection, leading to a wide range of dangerous attacks. Google Analytics, obviously, is meant to track users' activity, and to do so, it uses cookies. Within the Google Analytics cookie, there's a field for refer host and refer path, which is just the website and the path that someone was on previously. For example, if you're currently on YouTube.com and then click a link to go to example.com, the Google Analytics cookie on example.com will have YouTube.com set as the refer host and will have the respective path set as the refer path. If you send someone a link to a website hosted by an attacker, let's say attacker.com, that subsequently redirects to example.com, example.com will now have attacker.com and its path in one of its cookies. This is where things get dangerous. When cookies are sent in the HTTP header, they usually take the form of name equals value, semicolon, name2 equals value2, so on and so forth. Semicolons are the accepted cookie delimiter. Django, though, in versions 1.8 and 1.9, accepted square brackets as a cookie delimiter, while web browsers did not. This led to a disconnect in what Django and what the browsers interpreted as cookies, as you can see here. An attacker can take advantage of this by injecting a square bracket into the path of the attacker.com website, which will end up in the Google Analytics cookie on example.com, which will be subsequently sent to Django. With this, an attacker now has a way to set arbitrary cookies on a victim's browser. They technically won't be real cookies as interpreted by the browser, but they sure will be as interpreted by Django. This sure seems dangerous, but how can injecting a cookie into a victim's browser actually lead to any sort of attack? Seriously. The attacker still cannot read existing cookies, and still cannot extract the CSFR token. Pause the video and think about this for a second, and let me know what you think in the comments. Recall that the web server needs to receive the same CSRF token that was handed out with each respective form. Now, this is where the vulnerability really comes from. Web servers like Django sometimes like to take shortcuts and favor a faster process sometimes. The most secure way of validating CSFR tokens would be to keep an accurate ledger of all the tokens generated, bound to specific users and forms, and to index against this on successful return of each token. The issue with this method is that it is both storage and computationally expensive. 
On the other hand, there exists an incredibly efficient method of CSFR token validation called double submit cookie. Servers can merely compare that the values of the submitted CSRF tokens in the body matches the value of the CSFR token in the cookie that was previously set. This removes all of the storage overhead, as previously generated tokens are not retained. This method is not supposed to undermine the safety of CSRF tokens. Think about it. An attacker still wouldn't know what CSRF token value was placed into the request body, as they still can't see the CSFR value in the user's cookie. Even with this Google Analytics exploit, they still don't have access to the real CSFR value. This is where things get interesting. Since attackers do not have a way of getting cookies from a victim, what they can do is they can set their own CSFR cookie with the same name as the real CSFR cookie. They can output whatever value in they want, and then put the same value into the request body that they trick a user into clicking on. Django will now receive the attacker set CSFR value in the body of the request, however it will also receive two different CSFR cookie values the one that was actually set by Django, and the attacker injected one. Generally speaking, the server will use the latter one to process during CSRF validation, comparing both the attacker set CSFR values in both the header and the body, producing a matching result. Account deleted. There's quite a lot going on that makes this possible, however the root cause was due to Django considering square brackets cookie delimiters despite browsers not doing this. It ended up being patched in subsequent releases. Click here to see how I use Django to create the very first untraceable tracking pixel, and as always, thanks for watching.